and B, C, D, D, D. All right, so it's another group session. Uh, current time is 8.33 p.m., the 13th of February, 2019. Now, the NZD data was positive. Earlier, we had some Japanese news. It was mixed. The strength that the NZD has is still here. Earlier, there was another speech by, I think, one of the governors of the Bank of New Zealand, uh, RBA governor, I think, and that speech came back with positive rhetorics. Now, I want you guys to take a quick look at what has happened. So this is a direct result of the NZD news yesterday. So all those who caught in on the NZD news, well, by now you must have realized a couple guys in the group made a lot of money. Others know they missed out, but nothing to worry about. The point is other news like this can come. As a forex trader, this is technical and fundamental analysis in motion. The technical analysis aspect is right here. What happened? The price was what? Oversold. And you could see the support area being maintained. And the market started to give us some signals. We started to get some what? Higher lows. Right? Just so we had a pin bar candlestick. The technical analysis plus the fact that the New Zealand dollar was already getting positive data came through. And as such, bam, fundamentals the price skyrocket. Now, after reaching such a massive area of resistance, naturally, you should expect a what? Price retracement. So this is a price retracement that is currently taking place on the NZD, USD, and the H4 chart. And what is basically going to happen after this, the price is, in fact, going to keep on going towards the bullish side. We already got the market flow for the NZD, USD. We already established that the asset has been maintaining that support channel and as such the asset is in fact going to be going to the bullish side meaning that it's going to be attempting to break the previous resistance area the previous resistance zone was around this side let me show you i've showed you guys this night after night so this was a high and this was a higher low that we got which resulted in this massive downtrend and this is ultimately the correction. Now, be mindful. You have two different types of moves on the market. You have the indirection move of the market. I have the temporary move of the market. Your job as a forex trader is to know how to trade the two of them. The prevailing trend, obviously, it's the long term of the market that I take. So all of this right here, so basically, is the prevailing trend of the, the asset. The massive bullish breakout that you saw. Then this, this is the temporary. This is just a pullback. Notice the pullback didn't send you back all the way down here where the start of everything was. Down here, so was the start. This is the true prevailing trend. The true prevailing trend broke out from here, which was the market trend into the bearish side for most of 2018. Before 2019 came on the scene, the NTD already started to exhibit trades that it was breaking out against the dollar. We had a massive pullback. Pullbacks are going to occur because why? We're hitting strong resistance areas. Pullbacks are something that they never escape from the chart because eventually they're going to come up here at where the counterpart here, which in this case is the dollar, they have a good decent move. Uh, what can cause this? Uh, decent NFP, um, proper labor statistics, a good CPI. And it's not every single day the New Zealand dollar going strong. So whenever the New Zealand dollar week and the dollar have a good week going, this is the result. However, the rules of market flow dictates that the market ultimately going to do a correct itself and the market is going to start trending. Now, how are you going to know when the correction coming through? You have to basically look out for a couple of clues. Technical analysis allows us to spot these clues. Notice that the market spiked down to here. This was clearly a trap. Many persons probably saw this massive dip down to here and thought to themselves that the asset is truly reversing. But this is just one of the ways the market maker like to mess around with us. They see the price going down to here and you think to yourself that it's going to reverse. So you make the sad mistake of going with the market move because look, you will never consider that something known as a pullback exists and you end up selling tickets and back down here to the price above without realizing that this is actually a higher low area. 
the market ultimately rejected that, came back up. So this candlestick here was once bearish, rejected that, came back up, and started the corrective wave. So one, two, right here, so is a resistance to follow the neckline here. We got a pin bar candlestick right here, and then bam, now the market found support at a higher low right here. After the market found support here, boom, the market did another price correction, came up. This time, however, it failed to go back to the previous resistance side. Then one more dip. What we should be looking for, we should be looking for possibly another look of beer candle retracement, but ultimately, the market is going to correct itself and attempt to break past the previous resistance era here and also here. So the next target zone we should be looking for on the NZD USD in a couple of days to come is a breakage and a new resistance will be tested. I think the breakout is coming. Every single thing, basically, a farm pattern for us to get that move. All right, so take a quick look at it. This is the market flow analysis for the asset right now. So let's get the drawings out of the way. Let's go on the H1 chart. All right. Okay, so this is what the direct results were happening yesterday. Now, take a look what the market maker did. The market maker, before giving you guys this massive explosion, look how long you consolidate the market for. See that? Each one of these is one hour. And look how long you consolidate it for. And before he gave you such a massive, <laughs> before he gave you such a massive buy-off, look what he did. He broke the consolidation period by giving you guys a beer candle. So this would have been our what? Our ST. Sell trap. I told you, he always said such a trap. So a couple guys saw this big massive beer candle before this one came. So this was just before um, 8 o'clock. It was 8.30 the news. Uh, yeah, 8 o'clock, 8.30 the news came. Before that NTD news came, a couple guys actually, what? They sold. Couple guys get in at the last 15 minutes. Couple guys get in right there. So you could all right to say get in. And the point is, anybody will never exit at the start of the news yesterday and get wrecked. And they get wrecked very badly. This is just a pullback. Okay. Ultimately, as you can see, the asset is correcting and it's going to attempt to try to break past a resistance roof. A resistance roof is a historical era. Previously, when the trend was going downward, the trend got stronger after breaking past that. So, so no sound the way back up, it won't be quite easy to break. But the market can break it does. The NZD dollar, it's trending to the bullish side. Take a look at this. New Zealand dollar is at 9.5 out of 10. The dollar is very weak right now at 2.4. The yen is also weak. So these two are currently dominating the session. So by rule of power, you would pick the strongest against the weakest. So you will be going with the NZD, USD, the AUD, USD, and so on. Understood? Okay. Now, next asset now. Oh, wait, I didn't do the markup on this. It's, okay, this one quite simple, everyone. The asset basically can correct and go higher. You should wait for a retracement, potential retracement around here. Retracement around here and then ultimately plot for the correction. Uh, basically what's going to happen, it's going to be attempting to do a double tap right here. So, so you might see a double tap formation take place after the NGD keep on rising. And that double tap might give you one more dip. So you might see one more dip back down. So basically, you're looking for a double to farm. So you might see one more dip back down before the eventual explosion. Of. Now this is all me setting up a hypothetical setup. But it basically I found the structure right now. So you know how up as the price I go. It has to break past 0 0.68517 before you can even think of it going back to the previous uh, resistance roof, which is way up here. So probably look for a W formation and the trend, then eventually make a breakout move. But long term, it's breaking up to the top. It's painfully obvious by now. All right, so let's watch out for the retracement.
Okay, let's move on to the next asset, um, GBP Australian dollar. All right, so this is my chart markup for the GBP Australian dollar. Um, I posted this in the group. This is the H4 chart. This is the higher low area that we're hoping that the market holds on to and then eventually break past back this resistance area and then go to the top. Now, for those who don't understand, let's start from scratch. Let's go up on the daily chart first. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, why do I always go on the daily chart first? The daily chart is just my way of basically seeing what is taking place temporarily on the overall long-term trend. I have easily identified the long-term trend. I know that the asset is trying to go back to up here. It's quite obvious by now. And I know what a pullback and a retracement is. This is a pullback, right? As I say, it's a pullback. This is one, two, three, four. So currently I have to call this a retracement. If I got one more beer candle, it, was, it won't be a retracement anymore. I have to call it what it is, a pullback. However, if the market manages to hold this year of support right here, so, and then correct and start going back up, that's another opportunity for another run of buying. But right now, I cannot buy this asset. Why can't I buy this asset right now? Because the Australian dollar is way too strong. The pound of local strength, but the Aussie is way stronger, so we now waste no time for it. So this is the current market flow of the GBP Australian dollar, everyone. For well, those of you who are probably looking for a trade, you can jump in on this is a decent one. Ultimately, this pound Aussie is going to correct. And then after it finds a good structural area of support, it's going to keep on pushing right back up. Uh, each time it has a dip, as you can currently see, the market ultimately corrects. So we have one more dip and each dip gives us our higher area of low. So we keep on getting higher lows, higher lows. So it's like basically a man happy enough to us steers. So you know, so eventually after I pass the next resistance here, higher, uh, higher, 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 high. After I pass the next resistance here, which would be above right here. So you know, so you should look for one more dip and then the final breakthrough and probably trend even further. All right. So this is just me charting it up long term for you guys. So. The GBP as a dollar is a decent signal waiting to happen. The best thing that can happen for you, as soon as the Australian dollar get hit with negative data and the pound of local strength buy it. The thing about the pound and the euro pairs, even if they're at 5.2 or 6.0 or 10 in terms of strength, whenever they may get weak, you just really see them rally against them very hard. And that may come for notice. So, all right, so we've got the market flow out the way. Let's go on the H1 chart now. So by taking a look at the market flow, we understand that this that we're currently seeing, it's what? It's temporary. So you're now gonna look on this H1 chart right now and think to yourself, so whoa, with a reverse, it's go an end. It now I go all the way down. It can find an area of support and it can stop at that support area and now go further. The question you should be asking yourself is how far down it can go? Well, that depends on the strength of the Australian dollar. So quickly, the job something. And seeing that you understand that it's gonna be for a short period, you're not gonna be killing up yourself and going long on the asset. You're basically gonna be going short term on the asset. Okay. So basically, uh, there's a pattern right here as well. There's a W. So one, two, touch, bam, uh, rejection, lower area. One more attempt back down. I think we should get over Fibonacci, correct? Let's go for the Fibonacci. Now in a scenario like this, they can use the Fibonacci in two ways. One, they can use the Fibonacci to catch the retracement zones, or you can use the Fibonacci to basically catch the market correction. I think we're gonna use it to catch the market correction. One second. Dry fire, so perfect. So we want the market to continue going what? Bullish, correct? So this support area, 1.80737, waiting to see if it's gonna hold. Uh, ultimately, we're looking for some buyer strength from the pound 
and then these would be our target zones. So you use each one of them FIBA values as entry. You have a lot of them. I would recommend getting in around 61.8 and 50. These are wonderful corrective levels on Fibonacci. Now, what is the prevailing trend and what is the retracement? The bears are the retracement, okay? Because by the market flow, we understand that we're actually truly in a bullish trend. That's the true sentiment of the market. This is just roughly four days of what? Selling. So four days of selling can offset more than 30, 50 days of buying. So we understand that eventually, as this look of strength we are off, the pound coming back and it's sending even higher. That's what we got from the history of the asset. So it's just a matter of patience, you know? You're patient, you wait for the corrective move, you jump in on that corrective move and get some pips. All right, so on the M15 chart now, we're going down to an area of support. Uh, what could we use? We could use the RSI, uh, for those of you who like using the RSI. I keep it simple. I just use the price action moniker and uh, Fibonacci and uh, Bollinger Band line in combination with the price action monitor. So you're definitely oversold right now. So you understand that buying power will actually buying sentiments guys soon start pick up. Here we have our first bull candle right now, but take a look. The thread has not made a curvature yet on the price action monitor. Wait till the thread make a curvature like here and wait till the thread change to green. That is a little decent signal you can use that right now buyers are becoming more and more enticed to buy the asset. Remember, it can dip once more and go to absolute zero, meaning it will be touching this Fibonacci value right here. So it will be touching this white line where the market did its previous touch, okay? Which is right here. So it can dip and go a little bit further. So when you're placing a trade, don't jump in on the first candlestick that you see. That guy push the market in the direction you want to go. Yes, you want to buy the asset. Yes, one bull candle farm. But wait for proper confirmation that the asset making a move. Because what can happen to you? You can see one bull candle farm. You never wait for confirmation. You enter and then you see the market dip further for you. All right? I usually recommend waiting on confirmation candlestick number three. Then you get in on it. Because... The market maker will announce so many people are anticipating this buy off. So, this is our target area 1.81206. Remember, the middle Bollinger Band line is a moving average. Right now, you had a breach of the lower Bollinger Band line, you had a breakage. Whenever you see a breakage on any other Bollinger Band lines, then wherever the candlestick directions are, it basically means that the trend is going to be going in that direction more. It's mainly, it's still bearish. So there are still price areas the market maker can send the price down further. Take a look at the rejection right now. It's far away from the neutral line, the end period moving average. So this thing can in fact fall some more. You have eight minutes and 55 seconds till the next M15 can just um, farm. A lot can take place in eight minutes. Remember, the Aussie dollar is very strong right now. The pound is not stronger than the Aussie. So it can take the Aussie to weaken and the pound to grow in strength to entice investors to basically say, all right, we're going to buy. It. I understand that technicals are in place right now. You're at a higher low area, but could it? you have still more zones from the price action money that the price can drop to cool. So this is just a simple look setup. Take a look. A uh, combination of the Fibonacci, price action, monitor, and all in the period. Sure, stop with that, people. How do that? Uh, <laughs> all right. Next asset. Let's go to the famous Euro USD. Now, on the market maker system, we basically have our market baseline resting on 32. We have our trade signal line far ahead, but our RSI price line is at 34.2740. We have not much movement, it's basically flat. But take a look, I got an alert arrow. Now, there's something I want to show you guys. I just saw this earlier in a lesson session. 
on the H4 chart. What does this look like to you? This is like a pattern farming people, wonderful pattern. Now what happens when you get a W at a support area? That's the problem of power. If we get a W at the support, you know, and this goes, you know, let's say we get a, a Rami right now, or a pin bar candlestick, and I get rapid succession, three pin bars. But if our way, a farm, it basically a farm structure. Um, the asset did in fact broke and found new areas of support. This was the previous zone that it was at right here. So, all right, there's a thing to that go and feed. And it got it by off. It definitely went lower this time. So, if the market goes above my pitch, one lower area of support and the dollar, which is currently weak right now, if this weakness comes through and men can till Thursday. Yeah, that's going to entice some people to buy, but here's the problem. I have a, I have a good feeling so that thing I go collapse and break and go below 112410. No, 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 just so much I'm say the rise already. It, it have a fall some more. Uh, anybody have any speculations on this right now? I understand that W is farming right now, but my feel said this is going to drop somewhere. I think that all this is a tease. Anyone? Guys, Arbel, Devon, Gamble, nobody has nothing to say. Uh, all right, so this was the buy up period right here. Didn't last long, came back some more. It definitely a push right now. It would be good if we got a, a test of the previous resistance. It would be good if the market came back up, but even if it does come back up, you can still send it right back down. So we we'll really have to take this with Amelia to roll it a bit as you can't stay in too long. It's tricky right now. Right about now, a buy trap can set, couple man buy, and then the market maker send the price crashing down. I kind of see why enough people just avoid the euro USD altogether, but I tell them, man, it's up here that once they catch it the right way, they find a way. Look at look on the H1 chart right now. Basically, a farm structure for back up. It's the technicals and everything are coming into place. But you have to carefully, yeah, man. All right, so that's basically it for this asset. Um, I have an order placed on it. I have it placed right here at the previous resistance area. I'm hoping that once the market rallies eventually, and thing breaks here and I'm on my way to a decent buy off. But I'm just currently monitoring. I would like to get in at a lower area, but may I proceed with caution. Uh, we can get a rise and it's just a fast rise and then we can send it down further. All right, time is going. Uh, next asset. I'm going to focus on the asset I'm going to touch in a good while. Uh, USDJPY. Now, this one is a problem child, quite a nine right now. But take a look on the daily chart. It's going to break. Well, it's attempting to get ready to break the 200 moving average. There is a red alert arrow that has formed on it. And as such, we should be looking for a pullback. Now, y'all, oh, there's a cross also farming at the top. Once a cross farm at such a high area of resistance, look for a downtrend movement to follow. So pretty soon, the end would will come with some surprises for us. No? Right now, the end is showing weakness, but the data that it got wasn't really bad. It had mixed data. One was good, one was bad. So some yen strength can come through for us. No? I would caution everyone, do not buy at the top. Buying at the top is quite dangerous because we have a next session coming up. And then there's a big bad US session we have to think about. All right. So this is the current structure. Now, what happened with this asset? I have to admit, I analyzed it wrong. I thought that this, I thought all of this was just a pullback with one more dip, but it wasn't. This was actually the market trending back upwards. It has a couple zones, it has to break past. So one being one, 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 four, two, six. So right now, before that tends to come right there, so it looks like it's going to have a retracement and then it's going to try to break across right there. So I've not been paying much attention to the JPY peers lately, especially after I had such a bad end of month period with them in January. Yeah. 
kind of leave them by themselves. But let's do a markup, shall we? H4 chart, bull channel. Period of consolidation. Right, it's a market correction. Halea says a pullback. Right, a couple patterns right here, couple W's, two touches. So let's annotate it now. Okay, we're gonna start with the two touches. One, two, actually three. One, two, three touches. We had crucial era. One, two, three, four. So if I draw this correctly, draw it right here. So one, down, up, and then down again slightly. Right here, so we got a beer candle then up, and then right here, so we got our first major dip that followed by a consolidation period right here. So price dipped even further. Um, this was our first W right here that gave us a breakout move to the top around. So that's saw his market correction. Right, that's so would be the first impulse we have. Market style right that's so run as so would be number two. Okay, that's so definitely a farm for number three. Uh, this is CON consolidation of market. Okay, right as so a pullback. All of them are retracements. All of these, all of these retracements, retracements. So this is the resistance roof. Right aside the two respective channels. Uh, this are uh, HL, HL along with the correction, HL, HL, HL. Critical area support notice, right? Yeah, so the price never breach and go, it still gave us another HL. So that was a signal at the market, although a struggle with the resistance area. Yeah? there was a willingness to buy at a higher year of support. But then the resistance roof that was fighting the market finally came through enough strength, but look, the buyers are so strong, they maintain, they still held on. At a dip, so this would be our first, this is an HL actually in the long term, but for this period, lower low, if not to count it with just these guys alone not going further, this is our lower low, but ultimately it's a correction. Right, so all of that zone here are one big pullback. All right, all of this, including the consolidation period. For this period, the dollar weakened, the yen came through. But as soon as the yen lost its potency, oh, we had a cross right here. So the cross, right on the support area, pin bar, pin bar, pin bar, pin bar, haram, and breakout, trend go higher. Now, after hitting one higher year of resistance, the price consolidated again. But look, the whole support area was maintained. Then, bam, price broke even higher. So now we should be looking for basically another, another round of selling, a possible break up there. So before we get a big um, pullback on this asset. All right, we have that big massive resistance roof. We are open a card, that one there. So the other flow dictates, sorry, the market flow dictates right now that the asset is gonna experience another pullback, break higher, and then ultimately test the resistance roof here, right here, 11.426. And then we're gonna see what else the asset gonna do. All right, cool. Last one, then we cover, cover up everything. We will have that look on now while. Okay, I think that's about it. I've, sorry, I've already covered the GBP card. I've already covered the NCD pairs. I mean, those are the highlights of this week. Um, USD card, um, it's currently attempting its correction right now. If the USD is persist, we should see the continuation of the overall bearish downtrend. As you can see, 
Uh, we have not had a breach, we have not had a higher high. We have been consistently getting higher lows. So the asset is in fact expected to continue the downward trend. So this is another opportunity. The support door that needs to be broken is 1.30880. So one, two, three, corrective move, we're going down. This is a star right now. That's all I can do. The man starting out, possibly even do a, a, a spike found them. Just to get enough to buy, and then they ultimately have a correct the price. All right? Cool. So I'll stop it right here. Um, it, so far, it's been a good week. The week not done yet, but so far, the week has gone good. If you were to all of them. It appears, you know? There you go. Um, I sent a message in that group a while. Okay, and check it out to me. All right, let's take a look. I'm stuck. I stop loss RT. I don't know how to use the Fibonacci. All right, so I, I keep losing. All right. Well, Andrew, first of all, I'm uh, not really catch your ears, but that no matter. But I don't say you're young. This and yeah. something you're not going to catch the same time. And I'm uh, not like you, and no for the man them in the group, you know, full of potential. Because uh, some questions I should not ask, most people need to start asking questions until later on. Now, let me get to the nitty gritty of the matter. I don't take a look at the demo account in quite some time, but the mere fact that you lose, don't feel bad. You consider it as a learning process. So you should do Make a note of what you did. Probably you entered too early. Probably you was on the wrong side of the trend. Remember, you have to identify which power is in charge for that current period. You have two powers, buying and selling. But you need to understand you have a trend that is the prevailing trend, which is a true long term direction of the market. I have a trend that is temporary. Right, that's all. The overall drop. The overall drop. This is the prevailing trend. All of this is prevailing. Cool. The market are making it downward trend. These moves, these are temporary. But yes, sir, these moves can take place in a couple of days. So you need to identify what is happening. Is the market experiencing a retracement right now? Is it experiencing a pullback? Is the market stalling? That way you can figure out if you're going to go long term or if you're going to go short term. Now, setting your take profit and your stop loss, that depends on your pick target. You see, if you understand that there's a trade that might not necessarily go in your direction at the same time, but if you keep it some time it can go in your direction, basically, you know, so you're going to set your stop loss at a distance and your take profit at a distance. However, in keeping with your account size, you might not want to set your stop loss too far to give the market too much room to take out too much of your money. So I recommend 20 pips stake profit, 20 pips stop loss for everybody who is demo trading, who just a start out in Forex. Keep it 20 20. So if the market going in your favor, you collect 20 pips. The market go against you, you lose 20 pips, meaning that the account is still alive. Uh, what was the next thing I mentioned? Um, how to use a Fibonacci. All right, so let me see if I can quickly cover this with a little time I have left. I will do one more lesson for it. Now, the Fibonacci retracement is a price action indicator. It's built into the MT4. Um, I, have the, I have the advanced version of it um, on my MetaTrader. But it is quite simple. The purpose of the Fibonacci is to allow you to trade the retracement zones on the chart. The Fibonacci is the number one tool that scalpers use. Scalpers love the Fibonacci and other price action traders love it because it basically pinpoints areas of market retracements and market corrections. And if you use it very good, it can also help you with a break up. But that's a different topic altogether. Now to use the Fibonacci, you need to understand what a retracement is. I have said this numerous times, a retracement is a temporary temporary reversal that goes against the prevailing trend. The retracement is not a true reversal. It doesn't cause a dynamic change in direction, no matter how big the candlesticks are. The move is always temporary and the market is in fact gonna correct itself. So take a look at this area right here. You see this is an uptrend, but take a look at all of the candlesticks are bullish. 
Some of them are bearish. So all of these right here that you're seeing, these are retracement areas. Now the rule of the Fibonacci is you draw it in the direction of where the trend is going. You can draw it to either catch the correction of the market or you draw the Fibonacci to catch the retracement. Most people draw their Fibonacci to actually catch the retracement. Once the market is going bearish, you draw it from a top point to a low point. You draw it from either week to week or from body to body. I go from week to week on this one. Bam. Now, the values on the Fibonacci, these are all distances on the chart expressed as percentages. Each of these distances correspond to an area on the chart to which possible price retracements may occur. The most common areas on the Fibonacci in which retracements can occur are 50, 61.8, and 38.2. These are the most common retracement areas. Now, in this current scenario that I have, this is the retracement. Because from the market flow, we all understand that the Euro NZD is not really going bearish. It's actually going bullish. But what? We are caught in a big, massive pullback. The NZD came with good data. So we had this massive sell-off against the Euro. So in this scenario, you're not catching the retracement. You're actually catching the correction of the trend. But ultimately, seeing that we have gone back to a low area of support, previous support where buy up took place, the market is going to be looking to going back up. You use these Fibonacci areas as markers. These can also be points of entry for you to get in. Notice how big this zone is. In this area on the Fibonacci, what can happen? A lot of consolidation can take place. Same with what you saw right there, so before the eventual uptrend move. So you see the first attempt by the buyers to send the market up and feel local resistance, send back down. The buyers then do a double bottom, one more touch of support, and rally again even stronger. Consider it as basically I'm on a fighting way upwards on a mountain. You reach a local obstacle, you recuperate, then you fight again till you reach a higher area, you reach the top of the mountain, basically. Now, this scenario are the correction may I catch. Uh, let me see if I can find one in which I can catch the actual retracement. So, H1 chart. Uh, I'm going to find a better one. Let me use the GBPCHF. Oh, and by the way, the Fibonacci can be drawn on all time frames, but obviously, I wouldn't tell anyone if you go on the H1, the M1 chart to draw the Fibonacci. So, right here, right on the H1 chart for the GBPCHF. And basically, you're looking for the retracement. Now, the true downtrend hasn't come true yet, but you're basically looking to plot out the areas in which the movement's going to occur. Now, I'm going to start the session and post back the link just for you. All right, I will just want to join for the second session. One minute. Peace. All right. All right. Anyway.